Just when you thought Canada couldn't get even stranger, you have someone who comes out and says, parents don't have rights in Canada. And then in addition to that, someone else says, anybody who promotes fossil fuels, gas or diesel here in Canada could serve jail time. That's right. If you say, hey, why not get a gas powered vehicle? You could be in jail in Canada. I'm not making this shit up. This is an actual bill that is either gotten passed or trying to get passed. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian circus that we call our political spectrum. None of this shit makes sense. It's bizarre wheel, bizarre world. It gets stranger and stranger every single day. But before we jump into the contents of the video, I want to encourage you all to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. And if you're, on, if you're wondering where I got this awesome sticker, you can find a sticker bundle link down in the description or the pin comment below you've heard me say this a thousand times i'm saying this because it is a sticker deal for 20 percent off and that sale will be ending sometime this month so get it before it ends all right without further ado let's get into this very weird freaking mix of a video that yeah we've got put together here today there's no such thing as parental rights in canada says this ndp MP. This is this is a real elected, a federally elected member of parliament here in Canada who says parents don't have rights in Canada. You can't make this shit up. Do you view this as a parental rights issue at all? Well, I, I'd like to say, first of all, there's no such thing as parental rights in Canada. There are parental responsibilities. And in Canadian family law, the primary responsibility of parents is to support and affirm their kids. Children have rights in Canada, and these kind of policies restrict the rights that children have in Canada. So um, that guy at a family event at a family barbecue would likely get knocked in the face for saying that to a bunch of parents. That's insane. That is insane. Let's take a look at what the comments have to say. <clears throat> so it's okay for those children to haul on cigarettes and down beers. Go to bars, 10 years old and strip clubs, driving cars, voting, you get in the drift. Why should they be allowed to take life altering, um, medications another pedo groomer we don't want or care about your personal opinion i mean it's absolutely insane it's just it's just crazy what's going on that people federally elected members of parliament in canada are saying that parents don't have rights in canada that's i have two, i have one kid and my wife is pregnant you're damn right i have rights anyone who tells me otherwise <laughs> that's just not gonna work i'm sorry you're not gonna impede on my parental rights not gonna work that's a hill that people are willing to die on next up we have angus charlie angus canada's biggest cock right now in his press conference now this might be news to you this is kind of breaking news he tries to equate oil and gas companies in canada with cigarette manufacturers people don't freeze to death in the dark when they quit smoking charlie needs to go cold turkey on oil and gas first they're shifting their propaganda with false claims of producing cleaner products, claiming they can be part of the climate solution. That's like Benson and Hedges telling you that they can help end lung cancer. <clears throat> All right, so this guy is trying to pass a bill that we're going to take a look at right now, where he's trying to make it illegal for the NDP bill would prescribe jail times or jail terms for speaking well of fossil fuels. This is a real freaking thing. Bill C-372, also known as the Fossil Fuel Advertising Act, was tabled Monday as a private member's bill by NDP M uh, MP Charlie Angus. This cuck right here. This uh, is to criminalize the promotion of fossil fuels and prescribe jail time even for Canadians who say scientifically true things, such as how burning natural glass is cleaner than burning coal. Bill c 372, also known as the Fossil Fuel Advertising Act, was tabled Monday as a private bill. And this is the NDP MP for Timmins James Bay and a longtime member of the NDP caucus. Today, I'm proud to rise and introduce a bill that would make illegal false advertising by the oil and gas industry. He added that the oil and gas sector was trafficking in disinformation and killing people. Angus also twice framed this bill as the dawn of the industry's big tobacco movement, an apparent reference to Canada's blanket federal ban on tobacco advertising. As a private member's bill introduced by the member of a party with only 25 seats in the House of Commons, Bill 372 has almost zero chance of passing. But 
as written, the act would technically apply to all Cana- uh, all, to any Canadian who is found to be speaking well of the oil industry or an or of oil generally. It is prohibited for a person to promote fossil fuels, a fossil fuel related brand element, or the production of fossil. So how are you supposed to fill up on gas, bro? These people don't think of things. They don't think. They just do stupid things. This actual federal MP, he's worn a suit and tie for years. He's paid probably over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. He has parliamentary perks. He goes and has a, a secret or top secret. Uh, a, 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 a press pass or whatever to get into parliament. Okay, like this is like a, a like an outstanding member of society in terms of our law, our judicial system here in Canada. This guy is trying to make it illegal for you to say, "Wow, gas is really cheap today. That must be good." You could go to jail. Like you can't make this shit up. This is how Canada is right now. If if it sounds insane, it's because it is insane. It's not me twisting words, trying to drive fear or clicks or views. It's literally written in the bill that you could go to jail for talking positively about oil and gas. You can't make this up, folks. You can't make this up. Even Pierre Polyev has something to say about this. Charlie Angus and the NDP would prefer Canadian energy workers just shut up about creating powerful paychecks, opportunities for First Nations, and displacing oil from dictators and de- uh, depots. Conservatives will repeal all Trudeau NDP anti-energy laws and unleash Canadian energy for our people and the world. Okay, th- this is a real freaking thing, man. Like, this is insane that's happening. So if you love oil and gas, welcome to the right channel. I have a freaking Hemi truck, a 5.7 Hemi truck. Yeah, I- I'm not even a car guy, but I got a Hemi truck. That means something to some people. It goes vroom, vroom. I fill up on gas. When gas prices go down, I go, yay, gas prices are cheaper. Maybe I could drive a little bit further today. It's phenomenal. But it's insanely nutty that these people are trying to pass these laws just secretly. This might be the first time you hear about this. If you're wondering, why am I hearing about this on a YouTube video with Mr. Sunshine Baby instead of in the mainstream media or other YouTube videos? That's because it's a secret bill. Nobody wants to talk about it because it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's a huge deal. Because the NDP entirely could come and 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 back this. And maybe because they have a coalition with the liberals, maybe they could also back this. So it's absolutely a freaking big deal. You even have one of the Freedom Convoy lawyers here. Says, "If if you haven't seen enough nutty talk from Ottawa, see the proposed bill below that wants to throw you in jail for something... For, for saying something nice about oil and gas. Yep, that's right. Straight to jail for you if you are proud that you work in the energy sector and you want people to know. Or you appreciate the energy sector for keeping you from freezing in the winter. Or you acknowledge that the energy industry contributes to 7% of Canada's GDP. Jail, jail, jail. Or for the small sum of $1.5 million, you can go home. Hopefully your bank accounts are not frozen. I have, I have nothing more to say except that we need adults in charge. Please get involved in the next election. Please ask the candidates in your riding tough questions. You can ask them about this bill, whether they agree with it or not, and tell them whether you agree or not. Get involved early with these groups. We need to evaluate the conversations and the candidate pool in this country. This is freaking insane. You even have a breakdown here of the bill. Okay, this is a real thing. First reading, February 5th, is just happened, folks. This just happened. False promotion. It is prohibited for a person to promote a fossil fuel or the production of fossil fuel in a manner that is false, misleading, or deceptive with respect that it is likely to create an erroneous impression about the characteristics, health or environment effects, or health or environmental hazards of the fossil fuel, its production, or the emissions that result from its production. You can go to jail for saying, yay, gas and oil is good. It's one of our major things in Canada. Canada has a lot of gold mines. Canada has a lot of lumber. Canada has a lot of gas. It's huge. Yeah, but no, these these idiots in charge, these children, these children with this insane amount of power just want to say, hey, look, we're doing something good for the environment. 
No, dude, you're not doing anything good for the environment. You're actually ruining the environment. You're ruining the economy and you're ruining people's lives. Wake up, smack, smack, smack. Anyways, if that's not a big enough wake up call, maybe shit like this is where you have activists that have covered the Wellington door to prime minister's office with paint, red paint to signify blood because blood is on his hands. I'm just assuming, I don't know, and there's no description of anything that's, that's been put up there, but Trudeau's office is being vandalized daily. And then you have people like this. Why do I have to sit here and burn this stroller to the ground for people to listen to me? So you have a crazy person who is burning a empty stroller in front of parliament who has glued her hand to the cement. A woman set fire to an empty baby stroller and then glued herself to a brick path in Ottawa on Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. This is the level of insanity that we have here in Canada. And then she's got a script reading. And if you're wondering why I've got it muted, because I don't give a shit what she has to say. Are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me how expensive strollers are? <laughs> I got a kid with another kid all the way. There's a, there's a mom... And dad with a, with a kid in the stroller and a kid in their hands, they're probably thinking, that's insane. That's insane. Why would you do that? It's probably a couple hundred bucks for a stroller. This is the level of sanity that we have in Canada. People like that. And then, to top it all off, if you think it's just the people that have lost their minds or the low to mid-level politicians that have lost their minds, no, 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 no. You've got Justin Trudeau who says Pierre Polyev wants to make Canada great again. And that's, that's not what Canadians want. Canadians don't want Canada to maintain a level of shittiness. I'll tell you that for free. So if the other option is keep it shit or make Canada great, I think everybody's going to naturally gravitate towards make Canada great. But let's take a look at Trudeau trying to turn this into some Trump-esque circus. From the leader of the opposition is uh, under the previous conservative government, everything was perfect. And what he is proposing to do is to make Canada great again. That is not what Canadians want. Here from the leader of the opposition yeah, is... There you go. So somehow that's supposed to be so insulting that it's supposed to turn you off from supporting or promoting or enjoying anything that Pierre Polyev has to say because, oh my God, he said, make Canada great again and that's supposed to trigger you as some sort of insurrection thing and Trump and, oh my God, everything's going to be bad and we're all going to go to jail and we're all going to die because, because, because what? You want to make a country great? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's just beyond ridiculous and speaking of ridiculous we have another great clip from uh the most recent house of commons where andrew Shear says the liberals could run a superstore with all of their own ties to loblaws or from regina capel you would think that they would have thrown those talking points out after this week when we <laughs> learned mr speaker all the relationships between liberal staff and loblaws like brian top and don guy both who collect checks from loblaws and last year they met twice with the pm's director of policy oh. or like taya back at the in-house lobbyist at Loblaws. She used to have an office in the PMO. You could run a superstore with all the staff over there that have relationships with Loblaws. When will the Prime Minister realize it's not Conservative volunteers driving up grocery prices, it's the carbon tax, stupid! It's the carbon tax, stupid! And then he got in a little bit of trouble for saying stupid because it's not parliamentary, but nonetheless, he still got away with it because he's Andrew Scheer and even the House Speaker Speaker loves Andrew Scheer. Now we're going to finish this video off with Larry Brock, who says Trudeau's top IT bureaucrat refuses to take responsibility for deleting 1,700 emails capturing arrive can funding and shady contracting details. But nothing to see here, folks. The Trudeau government doesn't consider such destruction of evidence as criminal. Absolutely insane. Now, on the issue of deleting emails, Mindone, and Mindone, just to clarify, has never been the subject of this particular Project Helios investigation. Is that correct? Um, as was uh, published. Correct, sir. He's not part of the investigation. Uh, if I could answer. so I'm asking you, is he part of the investigation or not? On December 11th, I received allegations, as has been made public, relating to Mr. Doan. Is he still subject of an investigation? Uh, that review is ongoing. That review of whether or not he's going to be the subject of an investigation is underway? So the that's a possibility. The review of the allegations we received? So that's a possibility. Correct. Correct? 
Now, Mindone um, confirmed this, and through uh, ATIPS, uh, delivered to CBSA, has confirmed that Mindone um, has four years' worth of highly relevant, sensitive emails uh, between the years of 2018 to 2022, which not only captures the pandemic and the Arrive Cam scandal, but as well as the Baller AI investigations, have just mysteriously been corrupted. Uh, he's not taking responsibility for deliberately deleting that. The approximate amount of those emails is roughly 7 gigabytes or 1,700 emails. You would agree with me, sir, that emails are supposed Sorry, to Mr. be... Sorry, Mr. Brock. Sorry, Mr. Brock. Point of order. Yeah. This is Mr. Bekarak, and I don't believe any of us has actually seen this uh, statement of facts. I mean, do you have a copy that you can share with us? Min Doan at the time was the vice president of the CBSA. You'd agree with me, sir, that mm -hmm. deleting emails is an extremely serious offense. It would be a breach of the code of conduct to willfully right. delete emails. And it's incumbent on an IT professional, as Min Dong was, to protect work emails dealing with official matters, correct? It is part of our responsibilities. Yes. And the level of seriousness increases dependent on the position that a public servant holds. In this case, a low-level administrative data entry individual is vastly different in terms of the serious scale than the vice president of the CBSA when, in, when you reference deleting emails. Would you agree with that? When was the president, Aaron O'Gorman, inform, sorry, informed about Mr. Doan's deleted emails? We have not concluded that there were any deleted emails. When was she informed, sir? She was informed of the allegations when I received them. Of the deleted emails? The allegations as I received them. When was it? December Date. 11th is when I received them. I can't recall exactly which date I would have. When was the Auditor General notified of four years' worth of deleted relevant emails? Again, one point of clarification. I have no evidence that there has been deletion at this point. We are looking into the matter. Can you answer the question, Mr. Lafleur? When was the Auditor General notified of four years' worth of a Vice President's deleted email account? When was she notified and by whom? So I can say that during our various engagements with the Office of the Auditor General, we have provided them with all of the information that we had available. Did you inform the Auditor General yourself, sir, or someone under your control that the Auditor General received evidence of four years' worth of deleted emails by Min Dong, Vice President, yes or no? Again, I'm not sure what you're referencing. I did meet with the OAG. The chair, can we get some clarity, please? My, my questions are very direct. Yeah, Mr. LaFleur, and this, and this has a hard we do ask time. you just respond and just a direct answer, please. If it's a yes or no, please a direct yes or no, but otherwise a direct answer so we can move on. Did you notify the Auditor General of four years' worth of deleted emails? I notified the Auditor General that I had received allegations to that. And when did, you, when did you notify her? In December, after I received the allegations. December of 23? Uh, 23. Okay. Was the Treasury Board Secretariat informed? No. Did you inform the RCMP of potentially four years' worth of highly confidential, relevant emails? We are required to report potential criminality. I have no evidence of that at this time. Thank you, Mr. Wow. Brown. No evidence okay, of is, potentially deliberately time, deleting emails, and that is not criminality to you? Mr. Brock, that is our time. Wow. Mr. Baines, please go ahead. There you have it. They can't answer a single question. It's just repetitive and it just shows their true characteristics. But that's where we're going to end today's video, folks. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.